So last night when I was walking around my garden, I noticed in the corner of my eye some blight on my potatoes. Looking closer, I noticed that almost every plant looked like it was starting to become affected. This morning, the blight looked even worse. Blight can spread really quickly to other plants like tomatoes and peppers as well, so I decided it was better to get these plants out and harvested than it was to keep them in for another month. So even though these potatoes are younger and their skins aren't fully developed, they won't store for long as well. So I'm actually going to use these right away anyway. Even though I would have loved to have some storage potatoes, this is the best I've ever done as far as potatoes go, so I will take any harvest I can get, but unfortunately I do know that my harvest would have been about four times as big if I would have just given these plants another month's time. But I also knew that this potato variety wasn't a blight resistant variety after getting it, and I knew I could potentially have some issues with it. So with that being said, I harvested the potatoes and realized I actually had everything. I could jar up a bunch of beef stew with all of these potatoes so that is what I did. This was a very, very long day. I woke up at 6 a.m. to get these potatoes harvested and I did not go to bed until about 1.30 in the morning because I forgot how long it takes to chop all the vegetables for beef stew, especially when you're doing double the amount. I've never made a double batch of beef stew before. I was chopping vegetables for about two to three hours. I don't remember the exact time, but all of these small potatoes were kind of annoying to peel and I had to peel all the potatoes. Days like this just make me so fortunate and respect the people from generations ago because they didn't have the option just to throw things in a fridge or a freezer and wait till the next day. If they were harvesting something, they were probably also canning it the same day depending on what it was. And also it just makes me feel so rewarded at the end of the day that I did a whole day of harvesting and preserving and it's just, it's a really rewarding feeling. It's a lot of work. I definitely pass out at the end of the day, but it definitely connects me to roots I never knew before and just gives me respect for the people that came before me. So I'm getting a little bit of a late start today. I was actually canning until about one in the morning. I completely forgot how long it takes to process beef stew. Um, it's a lot faster to process broth than it is any type of like meal in a jar. To do something like this takes about a two hour like full go. An hour and a half for the process time, but you still have to wait for the pressure canner to get up to pressure and uh, back down to pressure before you can do anything. Unfortunately though, I ended up having two of my jars not seal correctly. And then when I did that broth last week, I didn't have a jar seal as well. And I never had this problem before. These were all brand new jars. And when I was looking at the rings of the jars and also some of these lids, they were all damaged. So if you are new to canning, um, keep that in mind. Be checking your lids and your rings. I'm actually shocked I've had this many problems in the last week. Um, considering I've, I've never had a problem prior. And since these were new jars, it honestly just kind of shocked me. So one thing I forgot to do with my second batch yesterday is I forgot to throw some vinegar in my pressure canner. You can see how foggy this jar looks compared to one from the first batch. I need to wipe them all down just because typically when I pressure can anything, you have a little bit of an oily residue if you have any leak out. So one thing I do is I put a tablespoon to two tablespoons of vinegar in my canner, whether that be water bath canning or pressure canning. And that simply helps this like hard water film not get stuck to your jars. So if you forget, you can do kind of what I'm doing now. Take a little washcloth and a bowl of water, add a little bit of vinegar to it, and then just wipe off your jars. This is an important step if you do have like any type of residue, um, especially any type of like oily residue. Um, it just helps uh, make sure that everything is good for storage. Beef stew is definitely one of those like favorites to can, even though it can take a long time. This is literally like having a slow cooked pot roast ready to go in a jar that all you have to do is heat up. You don't even have to deal with a crock pot in the morning. And that's one reason I love having this. We have not had this on hand in honestly probably like six months or so. So I'm excited to get 12 quarts uh, on my pantry shelves. The two that didn't seal, I went ahead and threw in my freezer and I'll just use this first.
It's been about two weeks since I harvested all this garlic, so today I'm actually gonna go through and touch all the bulbs to make sure they are curing right. When I did this a few days ago, everything seemed to be going well, but I did find a few soft ones. So I am gonna go through and just double check today that I got everything, but everything's been curing really well. When you're curing garlic, it can take anywhere from four to six weeks, depending on your conditions. We've been really, really dry up until like the last, uh, I'd say three or four days. We've been getting quite a bit of rain where I haven't had to water the garden, which has been really nice. Um, but yeah. Everything looks good today. So if you guys have asked me about this little rack that we made, these are just two by fours that my husband drilled into the wall. And then this is just some hog fencing that we had left over from a garden project a few years back. Um, we just wanted to have it off the wall since we were hanging it to help with the airflow. And it seems to be working pretty well. So let's talk garden pests. I actually had to pull my pumpkin and squash the other day. So this always happens to me. I knew it was coming. It's happened all five years in my garden. Vine borer. Vine borer is known to be prominent in Kansas. It likes to attack the stems of all squash varieties. So my loofah here, and then I also have a butternut squash um, called a honey nut squash. It's a hybrid. I realized that these smaller vines vine boar can't bury into and that's also how my cantaloupe and cucumbers are and I had a handful of you guys on Instagram tell me that there's also a handful of different pumpkins and squashes that have very similar vines to look out for so let me know your favorite varieties down below I would love to know and I'd love to play around with that more I personally just thought that majority pumpkins zucchini and any type of winter squash it was just something I would need to plant toward the end of June. I did go ahead and plant them solely for experimental purposes. I was spraying beneficial nematodes and I wanted to see if those would help out. I actually think I probably sprayed them a week too early. I should have probably just continued to spray those, but I didn't. They're kind of expensive, so I was just kind of letting it go. Then I was also doing this onion spray that I read and that obviously didn't work either, but vine borer is known to be a problem here in Kansas, so I've known just to kind of deal with it. As I just said, typically if you start to plant your squash varieties now, you should be in the clear for the rest of the year. So where I live in Kansas Zone 6B, we are currently sitting at about 117 days before our first expectant frost. That gives us plenty of time for any squash and pumpkin varieties. And what's really cool is those should mature right in time a few weeks before Halloween, which is the perfect timing. So I'm actually going to be replanting some pumpkin and squashes. I need to rebuy some winter squashes. Apparently um, I'm out of seeds, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and replant some of my pumpkins. This weekend I also wanna get my one, I have one more trellis I need to get up because I need to go ahead and get all this stuff planted if I wanna make sure it will mature in time. I am really excited though. I don't know if you guys can see, I have my first official loofah and this loofah plant is going so crazy. I'm so obsessed with it. But I think that's all I had for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next week. Bye.